this was produced somewhere between uh, 1976, no, maybe 78. So it's it's been 45 years since since I've I've seen this, and it's pretty amazing because I know the personal story behind it. You know, my wife and I uh, together uh, produced these, and it's uh, and and here and the amazing thing is that here we are uh, after all this time. It's you know it's still. It's still intact. It, it's still here. It's uh, it's pretty, pretty mind mind boggling. Most things don't last this long. <laughs>
turntable type thing, you would have a you'd have a mold come down, and it would clamp together, and then <clears throat> the plastic was injected, and then after the injection cycle, which was about three or four seconds, then it would go into the cooling cycle, and then literally just within another 40, 40 to 60 seconds, the mold would open up, and you could have a 20 or 30 cavity mold, and you could pull the worms out, and then it would go back down, and it would, it would you know, do, do another cycle. Well, if you could make 20 or 30 worms every 60 seconds, um, you know, that kind of tells you what the, you know, production capacity was for, you know, for making, you know, uh, specifically, you know, the ringworm. The innovations of the ringworm was interesting. I fished it a lot. One of the characteristics that was advertised was, was that the, the rings would capture air bubbles. One of the things that I found was most beneficial for me was, was how they picked it up versus how they would pick up uh, just a, a regular smooth body worm. In my experience, they held on to it longer and you had a, a more pronounced feel for when they picked it up. Uh, it was almost like they were, you know, kind of gumming it a little bit. So, uh, you know, I liked, I liked that, that part of it. The hard part was, was getting it into the retail package for it, you know, to go out into the store. <laughs> and so, uh, it, 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 it turned out to be a family business so uh, the the plant was divided in half we had the injection molding side and then we had the packaging side and so my wife Tina handled the packaging side and and I now my, my memory serves me that that I painted a yellow stripe down the middle of the plant, but I think it was more imaginary that, that I, I didn't cross over into her part and she didn't come over into my part because her part was insane because they had to take these plastic worms and place them on this card by hand at all, all in, in, in line with the, the tails all going in the right direction you can't cover up the address. You can't cover up the logo. It has to be perfect placement. And then it has to go through a, a, a film machine and then a heat uh, shrink uh, process literally one at a time. So, so we, we get an order for 100,000 ringworms and, and we have to put these things through a heat tunnel one card at a time. It was just, it was just, it was chaos it was just crazy tina would go down to the unemployment agency in the in the in the town that we were in and and just the, grab people that you know to help you know place the 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 worms on on this package so i am just now seeing this this package and there were there were quite a few varieties uh we had a whole plethora of colors and then we had uh we had two tails a paddle tail and a curly tail and then we had an injection molding method that we could actually make the tail a different color and it it it, it was uh, a lot like you know um a rebel hard plastic lure you know you, you had a six inch worm and you had 20 colors and then out of those 20 colors you might have five different tail colors so you just you, you were producing all these different series of worms and uh the girls that would be placing this thing on the card they would just have a tub full of worms and they would just pick them up by the handful as they were putting them on these cards we learned a uh, very hard lesson in in the world of, of soft plastic that we we really weren't aware of at the time that we started putting these on a card and putting shrink film around the card so the way that the card worked was that it would hang up on the store shelf on the display hook what we didn't know at the time was that 
the wires were made out of PVC, polyvinyl chloride, and the shrink film was made from a plastic polymer that was very close in relationship to the polymer structure of the, P, of the PVC. And so what would happen is that the, uh, uh, the polymers would, would co-mingle, they'd migrate. So what happened to us was that we put out uh, the original inventory in the stores without knowing that the shrink film that was covering the, the PVC worms was a, was a close polymer relative and the shrink film melted. And so all the worms dropped off of the cards and just literally just, just fell on the floor or fell at, at the bottom of the counter. And so we had to go in and pick all that up and clean all that up. And we ended up, uh, you know, using a different shrink film, a uh, cryovac film, which was actually a, a, a barrier uh, polymer to PVC. Well, that lesson led into the development of the Rebel Tackle Box, which was advertised as being worm proof. Uh, as anybody knows that had the old tackle box that was made out of uh, PVC or a relative of, of PVC, uh, if you put worms in your tackle box, you'll come back not too much later, you know, overnight or, you know, maybe even, you know, the next day and your worm had literally melted into the tray of your tackle box. So that lesson with the film, Dad started making these uh, uh, worm-proof tackle boxes, and that's kind of where that came from. In, in 1978, uh, so we were, we had the, the world economic situation that was impacting our business with this particular product because of the cost of the plastic, being that it was oil-based derivative, and there was an Arab oil embargo at the time, but the, the domestic uh, dynamics of what we were dealing with as, as a small business owner. Uh, inflation was 22%. Um, interest rates were at 17%. So if my profit margin on, on this particular uh, item, uh, w we calculated it as per worm, uh, would, would be somewhere around 5%. And that would be my profit margin. So if my capitalization cost me 17%, <laughs> then my markup on this worm had to be 22% before, you know, I could, I could, you know, survive as a, as a business. Well, in, in the soft plastic industry, you don't make 22% profit margin. So it was it was a, it was a very tumultuous time being being a, a small business owner trying to produce working with you know all of the you know economics of you know pricing and production and the, the only way that you could survive in that particular environment basically was to try you know to produce and sell you know as much product as you could because, uh, you know, there's no cost cutting involved, not with this type of product. So this 50-year-old car that I've seen for the first time today uh, has, has a lot of memories attached to it, globally, nationally, family-wise. When I see this card, I, I, you know, I automatically think of my wife because she's the one that created this. I made the worm, but she, you know, she made, made the product. Fishing it old school, this old stuff rules. Welcome to Retro Bastard.